Hi guys, Shelly Kelly, Annie Parker Confidential. Okay, today we're talking about how to go about finding a good plastic surgeon. This is done as an extension off of the video that I did last week called Plastic Surgery, what I've had done, what it costs, and the results. This question was posed by my girl, Danielle. Danielle, you know who you are. I love Danielle. She has been with me since the very, very beginning. And Danielle asked, how do you go about finding a good plastic surgeon? Because there are a lot of them, right? They're like lawyers, there are just a ton of them. So today I wanna to share with you how I personally have gone about finding good qualified plastic surgeons. Now at the end of the day, it's completely up to you, but this is what I do. Overall goal is to create a short list of three tentative plastic surgeons that I feel good enough about to schedule an in-person consultation. The first place to always look if you have this is to start with your friends friends that you know have done the same procedure that you're looking to have done. And I just ask them, who did they go to? Were you happy with the results? Did you like the process? And then one of the other important questions I ask is what didn't you like about him or her or the process? Now that's really important because sometimes people are just like, oh yeah, I liked it, it was good, yeah, the results. But if you key in on if there was anything that they didn't specifically like, sometimes that offers a little bit of insight into whether or not you wanna make an appointment with that person. So if if you're so inclined, jot that person's name down. Number two, good old Google. Yep, we're really lucky to have that as a resource. Be smart about it, but it's great to use as a starting point. I will enter whatever I'm having done. So say I'm having a breast augmentation. I will enter breast augmentation, plastic surgeons in my area, click. That'll give you a myriad of different selections of plastic surgeons in your area that do breast augmentations. Okay, you guys. Sorry, I hope you don't mind. He was snoring and it wasn't gonna stop. Okay. So I clicked through the first two pages on sites that I am generally attracted to. Now the first thing that I wanna look for, and this is a must, I want to go under about the doctor, and I want to make sure that he or she is board certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgery. Again, I wanna make sure that they are board certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgery. That is absolutely key. This means that he or she has undergone a rigorous board certification process by the only plastic surgery board recognized by the American Board of Medical Specialties. Here's why it's important. We're talking about your body and we're talking about surgery. We're not buying a car. When you choose board certified, it's a good sign that he or she is capable and competent of performing the surgery that you're looking for. And now that's especially crucial in light of the fact that there are a lot of physicians, doctors out there that are calling themselves cosmetic surgeons without being board certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgeons. So that's really, really important. And no matter who I end up going with, they absolutely, no bones about it, have to be board certified. If you like videos like this, please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you like this video in particular, please consider giving it a thumbs up. It helps my video rankings and I would greatly appreciate it. Not necessary, but a good bonus, like extra credit, is to check and see if she's a member of the American Society of Plastic Surgeons. The ASPS is a very well-respected entity, and the members that belong to it have to maintain a rigorous set of patient training and safety standards to qualify for membership. The next thing I look for is how long she's been in practice in my area. Why is that important? Well, frankly, I don't care how smart somebody is. I don't care how talented they are. I don't wanna be their first surgery. As a matter of fact, I don't wanna be their one of their first surgeries in the first few years of practice. So I look for somebody who has been in practice in my area for a minimum of 10 years. Why do I say in my area and I always ask, in San Diego, I live in San Diego. Here's why I feel that makes a difference. If somebody says I've been practicing 30 years, but the 30 years is a culmination of five years over six different states, that makes me uncomfortable. Right, wrong, or indifferent, I'm thinking, okay, they were in practice for five years and then they're deciding they better get the hell on out of Dodge because something's going awry. That is just my personal opinion. For me, it's a minimum, minimum of 10 years. 
comfortable seeing if they're BBB accredited because to me it just means that they take an extra level of interest in making sure that their patients are satisfied, that they're happy, and that anything that's gone awry, they make remedies for it. I'll go on the BBB website. You should be able to plug in the name. It should come up and then I check to see if there are any complaints against the business. That's just kind of basic due diligence. After that, I really just look around the site and I and I just use my gut. You know how some places just give you a good vibe and you just feel good about it and others you just kind of feel bleh. So now I've got my short list of three. These are the three facilities that I'm going to call and schedule an in-person consultation. That's really important because it gives you an opportunity to get the lay of the land, to see how different places operate. And you'll start to see small changes from one facility to the other. Then you'll also start to see general standards that most places practice. It just gives you a little bit more of a lay of the land. And secondly, it gives you an opportunity to see who you personally feel the most comfortable with. While I'm in the consultation, I am sharing with him or her what my objectives are, and then I say, what would you suggest? Second, I want to see before and after pictures. That's pretty standard, right? Then I always make sure to ask, now are these surgeries that you have conducted yourself, or are these just examples of what you can do? So I always make sure that the pictures they're showing me are their actual patients, not just patients of the facility, if they have other doctors there, but pictures of what they've actually done that often, but some places will charge you a consultation fee. It's usually very small, maybe 80 to $100. And if you decide to schedule with them, they will apply that toward the cost of your surgery. I kind of have a problem with that. I mean, I was in sales a very, very long time, and I feel that I am extending my time and my effort to give them an opportunity for business. And so I don't feel there should be a fee, but if you're comfortable with it and somebody charges it and that's what you want to do, I'm just giving you a heads up. A lot of places also do have financing. They're usually a very low interest rate, but it's some sort of a, um, a, a financing option through a company that does financing for plastic surgery and that. So you can always ask about that option if that's something that you're interested in. Okay, so how do you choose the final one? The truth is there is no one size fits all for a plastic surgeon. You could have three highly competent, highly skilled plastic surgeons. Each one of the three will do an equally good job. And really what it comes down to is who do you like the best? Who do you feel the most comfortable with? For me, all other things being equal, I like a place where I walk in and the staff from the minute you enter until the minute you leave, from the receptionist to the assistant, to the doctor, to the client care coordinator are friendly and welcoming and they make me feel comfortable. They make me feel at ease. You know what I'm talking about. There are, I can think of a few facilities in my area where, you know, the doctor gets good reviews, but their staff has a reputation for being <laughs> so bitchy that I will never even go there for a consultation because I know the reputation. Look, surgery is a big deal and it can be really nerve wracking. You want to feel comfortable and you want them to understand that they may do this every day, but you don't. So at the end of each consultation, they will hand you off to what is called a client care coordinator. I call them the closer because I, I don't know, I just think it's funny. They'll take you back into their office and they'll go over everything that you just discussed and they're going to go over the pricing with you and they will usually ask when you would like to schedule it. I always, I never, ever, ever make a decision during that time. I usually just say, thank you, I'm gonna take it home, I'm going to digest it and I'll get back to you within a few days. Or you could say, thank you, I have one other person that I'm interested in speaking to and then I'll get back to you. Either way, just be prepared. That's what they're going to do. Okay guys, those are the basics of what I do. As always, please feel free to ask me any questions below. Again, this is a safe channel for women to learn, to converse, to ask and to share. Never any judgy eyes. We're all here on our own path. For all things health, wellness, beauty, style, and healthy living, subscribe to my channel, visit me on the blog, anyparkerconfidential.com, and I'll see you on the blog. I